And the U.S. has sent FBI agents and Homeland Security officials now to assess the country and figure out how it can help Haiti. Haitian officials now saying there is a Haitian-born doctor who was based in Florida who allegedly arrived via plane in June. He is then said to have arranged to hire some of those involved in the assassination. Police saying the operation was part of a broader plot to install this doctor as president. Laurent Ramonte is the former press prime minister of Haiti and author of The Hands of the Prime Minister. Uh, he joins us now. Mr. Prime Minister, thanks for being with us. Haiti was embroiled in, in chaos before the assassination of Jovenel Moïse. So what needs to happen in the long term and the short term for Haiti to gain some semblance of, of stability? Well, you know, Haiti, we've had, uh, you know, basically starting with the earthquake in 2010, uh, we never really recovered from that earthquake because that created $15 billion in damages and Haiti barely got, in terms of uh, reconstruction funds, barely over $1 billion. So we're missing $14 billion to fully rebuild after the earthquake. Uh, so you can see that the math doesn't add up. And when this happens, that creates problems on the short, mid to long run. And some of the problems we're seeing, we're seeing today. So the economy of Haiti has had a lot of a lot of problems. Uh, Forty percent of our GDP comes from remittance from the United States, uh, and, uh, and and the economy. Seventy-five percent of the economy is largely informal, so the tax base is, is very is very little. You have only about three hundred companies who pay taxes in Haiti. So so you can see the systemic problems that are causing some of the strife that we're seeing on the streets. It's parallel to this uh, and compounding the problem is the lack of political stability in the country. So when you, and this is why President Jovenel Moise, um, however, you know, Haiti has some very nice parts. I mean, you're showing the parts here that are not nice in some that areas. But for instance, we have some very beautiful parts as well uh, in, in, in the rest of the country. So I just want to make sure that we balance it out. Um, right. So not Mr. Prime Minister, narrative. is the United States yeah. the best partner in, in trying to figure out a future of Haiti? Uh, after the earthquake, there were Haitians who believed the United States was responsible for the earth earthquake. The United States denied it. And then we found out that our offshore drilling did contribute to many of the seismic problems that the island nation was having. Uh, there have been coups uh, with U.S. fingerprints on them in the past. So how cautious are Haitians of American involvement? You know, that, that evolved over the years. A, a few years ago, I think that was the case. Um, now, I think it's a little bit different in, in the sense of, you know, they're more welcoming to U.S. involvement than before. There is a new generation, you know, right now we have the, the YouTuber type of generation. You know, I mean, we have the Gen Z type um, and, and, and also in Haiti. So that opened up the views. The views to Americans are much more positive today than they were in the past, where you had, um, you know, different generation of politicians leading the country and different generations of people. Period. Now I see, I notice that there is a whole lot more of of uh, sympathetic thoughts for uh, U.S. involvement in Haiti. The government has asked uh, the U.S. government to send in troops, security troops. Uh, to safeguard for the election, that has been reviewed and apparently, you know, not accepted. But you know, the key to Haiti being better is certainly holding free and fair elections as soon as possible and having a democratic leader to build around and work with, in order to to help fix some of the economic issues, create jobs, stabilize the country security-wise, and then put Haiti on the path of of uh, progress with a democratically um, elected leader. Mr. Prime Minister, I was in Haiti in, in the months after the earthquake, and, and I saw the devastation, and I also saw the beauty that you're talking about in Haiti. And what I was fascinated by more than anything was the size of the U.S. embassy there. What is the American interest in Haiti that demands an embassy, and you're smiling, that demands an, an, an embassy so large? Well, you know, certainly uh, starting with, you know, the U.S. has a lot of, you know, vested interest in Haiti. Uh, there is uh, 5 million uh, Haitians living abroad, of which 2 million are living in the United States. Um, 
you know, truly the size of the the size of the complex itself is very big. You're absolutely right. Now, why is it that big? I have no idea, but it is huge. It's you were huge, the prime uh, minister. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but, but you know, this is a diplomatic mission, and and it's something that uh, you know, the diplomatic missions you cannot ask uh, the country building why they're building it so big. You know, it's a very touchy issue, um, and uh, although I was the prime minister, but you know, diplomatic missions are, are outside of our scope of work beyond our pay grade. Does it have say. anything to do with that 1.5 trillion cubic feet of natural gas off the coast of Haiti? Well, it, you know, I mean, that's that's an interesting point. It, it might have to do with that. But, you know, then again, you know, I like to also uh, own up some of the solutions to, to problems. So, for example, uh, with that uh, natural gas resource that Haiti would have, you know, it's it's our job to create uh, the right laws in order for Haiti to benefit, for the people of Haiti to benefit from, I mean, from that natural gas. You know, we, we conducted a study with a South African company. We, we, we went to the World Bank to have the better solutions in order to, to exploit some of the natural resources um, that Haiti has. And at the end of the day, we need to pass the right laws and deal with the right companies in order to exploit this for the benefit of our people, rather than, you know, dealing with um, naysayers, I mean, that are saying that Haiti will always stay in the cycle of, of uh, you know, poverty and misery, but rather look at, you know, this way as a sure way out of misery and poverty, which is our natural resources and tap into it just like every, every country does. And this is an excellent point that you make. But Haiti needs to make the right decisions, and in order to do so, you, you must have, you know, the immediate elections coming up for to have a democratic elected leader in order to make those decisions that are going to be tough decisions, but ones that are going to take Haiti out, out of the mess that it's currently in. Mr. Prime Minister, Laurent Lamoff, the former Prime Minister of Haiti and the author of The Hands of the Prime Minister, thanks for being with us, and we will be right back. You're watching the second hour of DC Today.